Welcome back, everybody, to another GMBN Racing News Show with myself, Rich Payne, and this week I'm joined by Mr. Olympics, Ollie Beckinsale. Ollie, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. Right, today we are going to be diving into all the action from the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup from Valdesol Trentino. <laughs> Now, Ollie, before we get into the craziness that was the weekend's racing, because there was a lot of stuff going on. It was a bonkers weekend. It was. It, it was, was great. Awesome. Action pack, wasn't it? I want to talk a little bit about, is downhill too dangerous? <sighs> it's too dangerous for yeah, me. It, I wouldn't be riding, especially that Valde Sole track. Yeah, and this mental. comes off the back of uh, an Amory Piron social media post that he put up. Check this out. Now, unfortunately, Amory damaged his C5 vertebrae back in Lenzerhide because of a crash he had where he essentially got pitched off track over the tape into sort of the brush, the undergrowth, if you like, and hit a stump right. in there. Off track. Off, off uh, outside of the tapes. And that's what caused sort of the, the injury. Now, is this freak accident, can more be taken to make tracks even safer? To what extent do you go to? I just, so, you know, uh, a man that's raced around the world. Yeah, I, just, I, so I was an XC you. guy, not a downhill guy, so we're slower speeds, but you know, not full face helmets. So I, there's a similar sort of elements where we're racing big rocks, big stuff. I think well, you've, you've raced Val de Soleil, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, a few times Val de Soleil and it's, it's tough, you know, and yeah. I think, uh, I don't know, if you're looking downhill, maybe the, the sports that is, is, is similar is, is downhill skiing, racing. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they've got really big crash nets, of course. Yeah. But I think the difference yeah. I can see from their sport to our sport is a lot of how technical we are within the tapes. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's by no means a groomed piece, does it? No, we, within the tapes, we have some pretty gnarly stuff, to yeah. say the least. Yeah, you right. know, you've got, you wouldn't want to crash in the tapes. So big rocks, big roots, tree stumps, everything that's outside is also inside. Okay. Um, so I think it's really difficult. I mean, and as well, it's, you know, if you look at, you know, the, the, the DH or the XC stuff from Val de Soleil, it's, 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 a, it's a, you know, a small track for a big forest. You know, it's a uh, wild track. Uh, yeah, to clean um, a kind of, racing track and then an, 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 like a, an, safe zone a safe zone, you know, yeah. and then more crash netting. I, I can't see how that's practical personally. I, I think it'd be nice to do, I guess. And it's in an ideal world. Sort in of an ideal really. world. And I don't, yeah, I don't know. True. It'd be interesting maybe to chat to, you know, the, the course guys at, uh, on site and see how much they, they do when they're wrecking the course. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a, a tough one, that one. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, you know, like you said, the, the very nature of our sport is a, is a pretty wild... It's wild, yeah. A wild it's not very to try clean. and tame. No, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, and with the new formats you've got now, riders are pushing very hard. I mean, there was a few wild moments. Uh, check this one out from Joe Breeden. Breeden from the southwest of England. You have to keep going. Oh! oh! He missed his breaking zone. And also this one from Jacob Jewett. I mean, those, those two moments there are potential big ones. I mean, it shows as well how tough the track is. Uh, and the riders. For, for, for downhill especially, for XC as well. You know, yeah. that Val de Soleil track is, is pushing the limits, I think, of technicality. Obviously, the dust on the weekend, a bit of rain, rain yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So you had kind of slippery outside the woods going into still thick like dust in the woods yeah right. i mean it, it was mad and Ooh. i think just as a kind of downhill fan not a downhill racer <laughs> I, you never seen so many big wobbles you know yeah, even during race runs yeah right? even yeah across everybody you know the guys winning still were making yes. yeah pretty big mistakes yeah yeah I mean. um yeah and it was crazy and you, you see in the, in the xc as well a lines, B lines, not everyone nailing the A lines. Yeah. Uh, some crashes as well in the cross country and then the downhill, some, like you say, some, some big ones too. So. Yeah, so I mean, food for thought there really, from an organisational and a rider point of view, maybe something that communication could improve on in the future yeah. between the two parties. Maybe, oh. more, maybe we'll see more crash nesting. I mean, see, you saw uh, Jordan Williams. You yes. Know, he, yeah, yeah, he had big off and actually he was saved from rolling a bit further. Uh, Very good point. With some well-placed netting. Catching it in, yeah. So maybe we might see a little bit more of that on, on track. And, and, you know, I don't, I, to play devil's advocate of both sides, there is only so far you can go with these yeah. things, isn't it? Sometimes just freak accidents will happen. We see it in, in all forms of sport, you know, motorsport, bike sports, you know, these, these things do happen and sometimes a freak accident may just occur. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hope everyone's all right that had an off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. heal up quick, Amory. Hope you're all good, mate. 
Let's kick things off with the cross-country short track then to begin with. Now, the track in Val de Sole, Trentino, was about 1.7k long, so a good distance yeah, to it. Not a bad one. But it actually utilised part of the four-cross track. So the four-cross sort of track that they always have there. And they were going, going up it. <laughs> exactly, right? So they had to go up one of the rocky descents. Yeah, yeah. So they were doing it in reverse. In the under 23s female category, the first place went to Ronja Blocklinger with a time of 19 minutes 31. Absolutely sort of putting on a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really good. And you know, strong the, uh, season so far yeah, as well. Yeah, she is looking good. In the under 23s, Carter was running away with it for Canada. On to the elite women's. Flipping heck. Yeah, some race again. Flipping heck. I mean... Tight, right? It was tight. Big group again. Evie Richards took it on from the start. Again, she's a yeah, good fast start, confident, in some good form lately. Powerful as well, isn't she? Powerful. Took the race on and quite quickly established yourself as a, as a front group. Yep. Kind of, again, it was very cagey, six to eight people. Um, very cagey race because it had this long, fast, straight through the no start. No really bulking up. There was yeah. a front group, there's a second group. Kate Courtney always trying to get across. Yeah, Keller was in there as well, wasn't she? Keller right? was at the front. She's come back from illness, so back on form again. But then, of course, we got to the last lap. Uh, Puck Peters, who is unreal at the moment. Got the form at the moment. Really. Yeah. European champ from last week. A couple of World Cups as well. Having a stellar season. Yeah, yeah. She went, right, last lap. Took she on did. the Rock Garden. And then you had Jenny Risveds. Uh, Stiga was come up through. Yeah. They raced for the climb. Stig got back on. Yeah. Overtook it, Puck Peters at the top. It was. It was sort of... it. it the last half of that lap became sort of the, the Peters and Stieger show, didn't it? Yeah. Really? Those two sort of just jostling around. Yeah, and, and you saw Stieger just attack, just come over the top, yeah. which took some doing, to get the front for the, the kind of four-cross rolling yeah. descent. Um, just got a bit of a gap, but not enough to make it stick. Puck Peters came past, got in front, and it's then good, it was going to be a drag strip sprint. Yeah. And it was like the closest. It was. It was a like full-on lunge for the line. And uh, Laura Stieger took the win took by the win. literally a hair's breadth. Yeah, over full, full sprint, full lunge, good to see. Yeah, Unbelievable cool racing. Race. So first place went to Laura Stieger, Puck Peters in second place, and Pauline ferran Provo came across the line in third. Strong result in the end. My giddy aunt, men's. Men's XC short track at the moment is literally a watt-filled power fest. Yeah, the short track rider, head and shoulders above everyone else, uh, short spout. Schwartzbauer, Luca Schwartzbauer of the Canyon Collective at the yeah. moment is on another I've in fact nicknamed him to Luca Schwartzbauer because he's... That's an easy one, but a good it's one. It's a Luca Schwartzbauer. <laughs> the guy is an absolute powerhouse. Yeah, it's and he got the whole shot. Took it on, but he rode smarter this time. Yeah, he yeah, didn't sort of just try to blitz them from the beginning. There's other races where he's quite rare. He's just happy sitting at the front, giving it, and yeah, just taking the power yeah. and just saying, well, you know, almost just... Watch this. Watch this. If you yeah. want to come past me, good luck. Yeah. With this one, I think it's because he had the long grass finishing straight. Yeah. He was like, I need to play this one a bit smart. Yeah. But what he was really good at, it's almost like a, a road criterion. And because of that rock thing, you don't want to get too far back because you get caught in this kind of concertina effect. Well, and, and that happened. You see Alan Hathley actually slipped. Uh, he slipped on there, unclipped, and it actually did cost him a little bit. It made he had to work harder to get it. Yeah, and you're, you go back to eighth, ninth, and then you've got to, you're a bit stressed, then you've got yeah. to fight to work your way up. You waste a lot of energy. Yeah. Then it happens again. You go back again. Yeah, yeah. And when it gets to the last lap, you haven't quite got... Got the gas. Quite got the Schwartz power. Well, yeah, we haven't got the Schwartz power. He was cool. <laughs> so you think every time he hits that rock garden, first free, yeah. every lap. And he's yeah. just sitting there, rolls up, follow shooter, let, happy for him to take it on. And he didn't look like he was, you know, when he was on the front, that he was sort of trying to just murder everyone like yeah. he has done in the past. Because sometimes he, he looked like he was controlling the pace a little bit more yeah. rather than just sort of trying to just murder them all yeah, off. Yeah, whether front. he wasn't as confident this time or whether he w was the start straight, maybe it had a headwind or something, yeah. I don't know. But but he was he rode a really smart race. He did. And then, of course, we got down to the bell lap. We had about eight or nine riders yeah, it was left. still a big group. Nino was in there. Haffley was in there. Uh, you know, Blevins was, was there. Blevins, yes. Yeah, he was having a good Blevins ride. Come back. But yeah, last lap, boom. That's when he uh, <laughs> It was ridiculous. Found another gear, didn't he? Yeah, and then coming off the top, hits the finish straight. He had a big gap at the end. So he yeah. did. He really. rode away with it. So yeah, results, scores on the doors. Lucas Schwartzbauer takes first place in the men's. Alan Haffley, great result in second place. And Josh Dubon, strong yeah, result. Yeah, yeah. Third place for the Rock Riders. <laughs> right then, time for the Cross Country Olympic main event. 4.2 kilometre course awaited the riders. Ollie, you've been there, you've ridden it. How's the track changed from then to now? It's hot, generally. 
uh, medium altitude, hard work, but the climbs are savage. Right. One of the hardest climbing circuits I've ever ridden. In terms of, of ridden. punchiness or length or all of the above? The gradient. It is, it's Super steep. steep, first gear, riding up. It's a steep mountainside and they use it to kind of full effect. Obviously over the years, like a lot of mountain bike tracks, more technical. Done and dusty, that, right? And dusty, yeah. yeah, all weekend. Big, big routes, big, big rocks. Well, what you're finding is you go straight up, vertical climb, really steep, turn it on yourself, straight down. You know, so it's no rest in between. No, really, really intense. And especially this weekend with a lot of the deep dust, that dust is very unpredictable. It's hard yeah. to ride at the best of times. Never mind when you're two thirds away for yeah. an XC race and it, you're, you know, you're breathing out your backsides. Under 23s and in the under 23 women, Sophie Pedersen would win again. Won all four rounds so far. Yeah, four from four strong performance and in men's Carter Woods the Canadian would take the cross country Olympic yeah discipline. great ride yeah he's been bumbling around there weekend. you know good good results all year but yeah that takes a win on this one so yeah, yeah really cool strong weekend for the Canadian right XEO women's what a race Puck Peters yeah. stormed it right absolutely smashed it so start loop roughly all together um, Puck Peters had a great start but then they hit the first lap proper which starts off with the steepest climbs yep. And she was gone. She was. She was out of there. You could see her. She did a an old school Loana comp. She was like, I'm out of here. This track's crazy. You guys are nuts. I'm yeah. going to ride off. And that's exactly what she did. She rode yeah, off she made it. one mistake that I saw on camera. On the, climb, on the right? last lap, she made a, a couple but, of but she was a minute up nearly. Well, 40 seconds up after lap one was a minute at the end. Rode her own race, which I think on that sort of technical track, being on your own isn't yeah. a bad thing. Um, but then we saw some really good battles behind. Yeah, so she actually finished 52 seconds ahead of second place, which was a career best for Martina Berta, Italian. Yeah, yeah right home race, did a great result. She was having a really good battle most of the race with Pauline from Prevost. Until? Until on the kind of, I think, the most technical part. Yeah. Uh, big, dusty, you know, proper over the bars, yeah, which is was... rare for cross country to see a proper flip. She got up, she finished the race, not hurt. You can see a bit shaken though, very sort of covered in mud, head to toe almost. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, so full dust on the white world chase for a PFP in the end, yeah. I think there. So in the end, Rebecca Henderson came through, which is a good result. She had a great season last year. So far this year, a bit wobbly. Yeah, but finding form, I think. Finding and maybe, form. you know, aiming for world champs there. Yeah, so. maybe a slower burn. Yeah. Laura Steger, fourth place, so obviously winning that short track. Fourth place in the in the XCO. Great weekend, yeah. Great. I think that's a you know I think that's a weekend you'd be pleased with there. Maybe Jump. not a win. I don't know if she was after the win. They're always after the win, aren't they? Yeah. But and Mona fourth, Vitendalda, fifth Mona place. Miss Warner Awful in fifth start place. though. So that was her kind of that was her race. She was playing catch up all race. She's in great shape at the moment, but it gave herself a massive handicap on the start. Yeah, I mean, if you give a rider like Puck the opportunity to ride off. Then you are you are making a, an even bigger mountain to climb, right? Yeah, exactly. And so. which was the case, a minute fifty three back, but still on the podium. She'll be pleased with that. Some great positives, especially after European champs second place of the week. Yeah, before. I reckon you take it. The men's race was an absolute blinder, right? Then all. So, who'd have thought it? Nino Scherter. 35th. <laughs> 35th. He's like, I've broken the record. Oh, hang on, I'll just keep going. His race from start to finish was just perfection, you know? And it was interesting because obviously he was looking and feeling good and there was a group of four of them yep. which rode off yeah you had Hathley yeah he's in good shape at the moment shooter Sam Gaze yeah uh, and Schwartz Power yeah those were the four and then there was a big group of kind of six back yeah, they right. were looking kind of pretty similar but there was a crucial moment that I sort of noticed on camera and it was that A and B line section where that yeah. steep dropped right hander yeah Nino took it Alan Hafferley took it and the other two went around and it was at that point where the gap opened up, right? Yeah, it was about, it was only about three or four seconds difference, but the A-line, it's so difficult. You came up one, one of the hardest hills, so full gas, yeah. leg, eyes spinning so all yeah, over yeah, the place. You're like, <clears throat> and you had to turn in, drop, and turn on this big dust. Real, so yeah, it's gonna Horrible, say. really horrible stuff. Proper tech. And um, like I say, Nino is nailing it every time. You saw Hafferley go, I know what's coming here. Yeah. He did a monumental effort to get from fourth to second to get yeah. the wheel. He did, Dropped didn't he? in, they got the gap on the other two. Nino saw it, full gas, and then that was... Pff, yeah, and, uh, you up. could see like Hafferley was doing his best to hold on and he was holding on yeah, for a yeah. good time. He did a good job. But then sort of he buried himself and yeah. that was it. He hit the wall. The elastic broke, done. The elastic did broke and he, he, he sort of, he suffered for that effort, I yeah. think, because Nino, I mean, amazing. He took first place again. Fluckiger then rode through pretty strong as Hafferley was yeah, so even out of his butt. Mateus Fluckiger, Vlad Daskalou, poor starts. Yeah. 
um, and they paid for that again. They were riding probably a similar speed to Nino later in the race, but again, no start positions. But I mean, he actually set the fastest lap of the race. So I mean, he had yeah. the legs, Dasklo, and he, had, he, you know, he's won European champs the week before. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. the, he's finding his form again. So Nino Scherter, congratulations, first place. Matthias Flukiger in second. Vlad Dasklo in third. Dubo. Joshua Debo again. Yeah, back Another on the strong top result. five. Hathaly hung on. Clung. Cl just Clung. Just like that. No, I will get podium. Two laps of chewing the handlebars. But fair play to him. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, a that was some ride. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Alan Hathaly rounding out the podium in fifth place. Ollie, not a downhill man, but what a race the downhill was. I like watching it. <laughs> oh my God, it was insane. It yeah, was yeah, action packed, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so really the, good. The track in Val de Sole Trentino is known as the Black Snake. 1.95 kilometres long, around 520 metres of descending in it. And <sighs> it's a big track, eh? It is. To me, I think it's the roughest, gnarliest steepest, most tech track on the circuit. Yeah, and you, as a result, we, you see bigger gaps more wobbles, even the top Moments. guys, you know, no, I, yeah, a couple of guys had full clean runs, maybe Brosnan, I think yeah, he, he I was mean, clean, he was but consistent. Yeah, yeah, other guys making, even at the top end, you know, it we'll was get our, I mean, action. yeah, it was non-stop action packed. Check out the full highlights on GCN Plus because it's well worth a full watch. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. In the under 23s, Sasha Ernest won the under 23s women with a time of 4.21 a time that would have put her eighth in the elite women's category. Yeah, the strength of the juniors is crazy. Unbelievable, right? And in the junior men's category, Bodhi Kun won first place with 343.78, a time that would have put him 13th in elite men's. Now, they did have a drier, much less blown out track, but it just goes to show them junior guys, they're coming again. Yeah, and well, look at this year's. Exactly. Graduates. Yeah. The current, doing the all current right. crop, right? I mean, <laughs> unbelievable racing. On to the elite women's then. And it was another monstrous win for Valley Hole. Did you see this? I did, yeah. Unbelievable, right? Back-to-back -back wins for her. Smooth, too, eh? Smooth. And she took it by a good chunk of time, so 2.9 seconds. And she was green at every sector. Every one. Every single sector, Valley Hole was green at. Showing that consistency and just you know, quicker the whole way down the track. There was no, no big moments. Yeah, no. and a big gap, obviously, as well. So, yeah. Yeah. It was, and uh, shoulders above. Yeah, she really was. A deserved winner. A few other notable mentions. Tony Seagrove's crash, sort of pitched sideways, sort of over the bars, off this big rock. Luckily, yeah. uh, okay for the best part, bumps and bruise. Yeah, Got but again, it's like the, just the gnarliness of the track, you know, people getting pitched, rolled, bumped over the bars. Yeah, That's the, that is the black snake, tough. unpredictable. Yeah. So it was Valley Holt taking a deserved first place Cami Blanche in across second for the Dorval Common Cell team. Strong result there. Jess Blewett, the New Zealander. Yeah, yeah. Great result in third place, 4.7 back. And then it got tight, even despite this being a plus four minute track for the girls. Yeah. There was still a tenth of a second. And it shows the strength in depth. It does, yeah, right? Of, of all the fields, so yeah, and especially women's downhill. So. They're just all pushing so hard. So Marine Cabaru, the French rider on the Scott team, crossed the line in fourth, 5.05 seconds back. And then Nina Hoffman on the Santa Cruz Syndicate in fifth place. The German rider was 5.2, so still incredibly tight. Yeah, super close race. Very strong, podium. yeah, very strong top five riders. And I think there's going to be a lot of jostling in the in the latter rounds this season. On to the elite men's all, and uh, well, what a race this was as well. It, literally, there has been no race this year that I haven't been glued to the screen for. Like, this one was special, though, I think. It was, think? I mean, they're all special, but this one was sort of mind-boggling. So, bear in mind, people, we had Jordan Williams winning the opening round in Lenzerheide. Yeah, as his first Elite first World elite. Cup. That, first Elite, first round. Which you know. Yeah, right. On to this one, however. A potentially gnarlier track. Well, it is gnarlier, in my opinion. It's a tougher track. Uh, we had Loic Bruni coming down on an absolute fly, makes a mistake, drops four seconds, unfortunately doesn't make it into that top five. Super Bruni, not quite so super at this round, no. unfortunately. Oh, and Bernard Kerr, you know, Bernard hot Kerr. seat for a long time. You know, yes. he sat there, good time. Until? Until. The flying Aussie come down, Troy Brosnan pipping him. And I think, you know, I think BK was like, I might be onto a bit of a winner here, but not on Brosnan's watch. No, Troy Brosnan would come down and uh, yeah, take a couple of seconds out of uh, yeah, and he was super smooth. A lot of people had a well, I, I, you know, when I watched this run, I didn't see any 
might be you know major mistakes for Brosnan. Even no. a lot of the guys around him were making it. He was green all the way through, yeah, super and he's, smooth. Exactly, he's known for sort of that consistently fast riding. I mean, he's he's due a win. It would not surprise me if we see him on top of the podium sort of at some point in the latter half of the season. I'd be I'll be gutted for the guy if he's not. Yeah, yeah. Due one. Yes, Thibaut Daparella. Holy <laughs> mackerel! I mean, that was edge of the seat, right? Oh my goodness, that guy. He had about four near death moments, I swear. Four wobbles, I think. Massive, Big ones. Some saves. That one he nearly tucked to the front and literally just stamped a foot down, picked it up, and just carried on going. Yeah, it was impressive I mean, stuff. They've got to cost him a bit of time, right? But I mean, he's it's still like a different it. tactic, right? Yeah, I mean, he, you just hang on for dear life. Yeah, gets like, to the bottom. I was just like, how, different way are you, of doing how it. are you still <laughs> going? How are you still t- rubber side down? And I mean, he was and, and smashed it all the way to third place. Uh, Jordan Williams, like we said, our other young gun. Sadly, a big old crash for him. On to Jackson Goldstone's run then. I mean, the kid nearly catapults himself out the front door on the first turn. On the first turn, yeah. Saves and then he's it. just seems to pin and jump from from like line to line to rock to rock. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, a pinball. A couple of what you know, little wobbles, but yeah, from the outside, I'm like going, you know, his, his, you know, his suspension looks stiff. He's not yeah. like he's sat on the bike. He's just bouncing from track to track. He really and is. And missing out all the difficult... A couple of lines, I think, were... It's interesting. His lines, I think. Yeah, very much his lines. So I want to talk, like, very briefly, in XE, we do talk about weight and size. It makes a yeah, difference, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. power to weight ratio. Are we going to see sort of a shift in downhill like that? Now, traditionally, downhill is a bigger, stronger guys, you know, the forces that they're dealing with. Jackson Goldstone, tiny guy. Yeah, and it's similar to... Um, Skipping, hopping so around. So, Laurie Greenland's trainer, Andy Wadsworth. Yep. We've done some stuff with him before. Yeah, I work yeah. with him regularly. And, and he was saying that he doesn't want Laurie to be big. He wants him to be strong. But yeah. it's uh, um, the bigger he is, if he's big muscles, big guns, when he hits an impact, he has to try and hold that muscle up. I so see, he's trying I see. to keep so him it's a, it's a light. Sword. So it's strong but light is what they're after, mm, which is okay. kind of what you're after with XC really. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I wonder if we're going to see that sort of creep into like downhillers, sort of they're, they're profiling a little bit more maybe. But either way, Jackson Goldstone absolutely crushed it and took his first ever elite win as well with a time of 3 minutes 34.9. The kid was on fire. And a big gap. Yeah, he did. He did. He put uh, he put a couple of seconds into him. Yeah, which at this uh, a World Cup level, that much like Valley Hall. Yeah, that's rare. Destroyed yeah. him. Yeah, I think I, it was an unbelievable run. He was due it. It's a deserved win. I think we could see him take another one. I bet you, you know, Jordan Williams would be over there going. But yeah, <sighs> first elite, first elite this uh, year, and one for Jordan, one yeah, for Troy. Yeah, and Troy. I think that matches what G did back in the day. So G, I think, got a win in his first elite season and I think it was third round as well. There you go. I think it was, yeah. Jackson Good facts. Goldstein. Good facts. Yeah, Jackson Goldstone first place. Finn Isles, strong run, strong run for a second place for the specialised rider. Thibaut D'Aprella held on for dear life to claim third place. Fair play. Absolute, you know, trooper on that one. Troy Brosnan, silky smooth into fourth and rounding out the top five Trek Factory Racing's Loris Vergier. Right, that is it from this week's GMBN Racing's news show. Do you think downhill is getting a bit too dangerous? Do we do we go send Ollie down a downhill track to find out? Let us know in the comments down below. Until next time, everyone, thank you very for mu- thank you very much for watching, I should say, and we'll see you later.